Kita melihat bagaimana perkembangan geopolitik antarabangsa membawa kesan kepada ekonomi seluruh dunia. Di peringkat global, kita melihat kadar, kadar faedah sudah pun ditingkatkan di negara-negara maju, di Amerika Syarikat dan juga sudah pasti di UK juga. Dan beberapa, beberapa negara lain akan dijangka turut menyertai kenaikan ini. Kecuali Bank of Japan yang masih lagi mengekalkan kadar dasar monetari yang akomodatif. Bagi membincangkan perkara sebegini dan juga kitaran ini, kita bersama dengan Shan Said, Ketua Pakar Ekonomi GYIQR. Sean, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Sean, we are witnessing uh, in the market stagflation, rate hikes, uh, recession and also QE, quantitative easing. Where is the, uh, where is the global economy heading towards, uh, Sean? And what does the history te- uh, teach us and how can we move forward? Yes, absolutely. What you just said that global economy is heading towards stagflation. And this is September 2010. I was invited uh, in a Stanford Alumni uh, Association uh, webinar. There were only 15 people, and there was a scenario created the way uh, central banks and the governments are throwing money in the economy. Eventually, it will lead to stagflation. And in our July IQI's uh, newsletter in November 2020, we shared that uh, advanced economies are heading for stagflation and there will be a lot of volatility in the market. After 17 months, all the mainstream media is talking about stagflation. What uh, the uh, scenario that we foresee in the next uh, five to six months, uh, the Fed is going to increase interest rates. There will be hike of seven interest rate this year. Uh, the discount rate will touch uh, 2%, but eventually uh, Fed will uh, reverse course and they will go back to QE5 because the US economy or many advanced economies, they can't take the pressure of higher interest rate. Already we have seen that consumer sentiments are quite bearish and you know, 70% of US GDP, it comprises uh, of uh, US uh, consumers uh, uh, consumption, but the consumption patterns are quite bearish and uh, consumers are scared there is a sense of uh, the despondency among uh, people in US and even in Europe that central banks and governments have not been able uh, to turn around the economy and eventually it will lead to severe and deep recession. So I think stagflation, hike in interest rate, uh, recession, uh, QE5, it's moving into a vicious cycle. And, you know, economy will have a very rough time for the next two to three years and inflation will continue to show its head for the next two to three years in the advanced economies and global economy will only recover in 2025 not before that uh, Shan, uh, in terms of recession is it a business or consumer cycle a lot of policy makers and investors think that recession is a business cycle is the recession knocking the doors of uh, advanced uh, economies yes there is a myth about recession that recession is a business cycle, absolutely wrong. Recession is a consumer cycle. When consumers don't spend, the businesses don't invest, the economy actually shrinks. So the concept that recession comes after every two to three years, it's not about business cycle, it's about consumer cycle. At the moment, the way I see uh, things, it's a rough ride. Consumers' sentiments are very bad on the ground Uh, in Europe in North America, and I don't see that spending patterns going up. So I think, yes, global economy uh, is uh, facing recession. Uh, we at July IQI in our latest newsletter for the month of April, we have shared Bank of America, JP Morgan, they are all expecting that recession will hit advanced economies in H2 2022. So recession is very much on the cards and it will be quite severe this time. And also, Shan, in terms of monetary policy and also uh, QE, has it worked in the past 14 years ever since the QE started in December 2008? Do you think that the Fed has been behind the curve in implementing policy a lever? QE has actually failed uh, in advanced economies. It has not really spurred growth. I still remember I was in US when base terms went down on 18th March Lehman Brothers went down on 15 September. Both occasions, Fed was panicking and it did not know how to cope uh, with those pressures and with those banks. And the way I see things, QE has actually borrowed future growth rate. 
it has not helped any economy whether in europe or in north america or whether in japan the only way forward is uh, let the economy slow down and then it starts all over again that's the only way forward but qe monetary policy the question that investors are asking post covid is the policy mix whether monetary policy or fiscal policy is it working for advanced economy the answer is no the policy mix has failed miserably because it has not spur growth the consumer sentiments are bad economic confidence is abysmally low so you know qe has not really worked for advanced economies and you know as you increase the velocity of money it does not bring prosperity or it does not improve the standard of living it hurts the consumer i can tell you 3 years back if you have 75 100 dollars you can easily do your grocery shopping in us but right now you need at least 200 to 250 dollars to do your grocery shopping so that clearly indicates that inflation is high uh, consumer sentiments are low and this will continue for the next 2 to 3 years and shan if it's not working for the past 14 years why does the us still using qe as the the the, the last result or the last the, the another tool to help the economy and what's what's going to be the impact for the whole world in terms of qe i think they have uh, not learned from history uh, one of the greatest nobel laureates in us milton friedman uh, wrote this book in 1990 money mischief and in chapter 8 Uh, on page 189 he mentioned how fed is going to create crisis in the form of inflation so we at iqi we already uh, knew what is coming because we follow people with credibility and what milton friedman uh, shared in his book it is still very much relevant and what is happening right now is a perfect recipe of disaster of chaos of bazooka that is coming into the market and we expect that fed as sir jerome powell two weeks back has admitted that fed has been behind the curve and the last 15 years fed has not been able uh, to bring confidence in the money except for printing money 24/7 and printing money does not help the economy in the long run uh, ishan you mentioned in your first point that, uh, about the deep recession uh, maybe if you can draw an analog- analogy uh, between great depression in 1933 and also the modern day deep recession that you mentioned of 2022 is history basically repeating after 89 years yes absolutely uh, najib history is repeating and i think the advanced economy central banks they have not uh, learned any lesson there was a very nice uh, seminar that i attended in um, 2009 organized by brooking institution and the paper is available on uh, on the internet the presentation was made by christina roma Uh, she was the council member for obama administration in 2009 and the title of that article was the lessons from the great depression and in that uh, uh, seminar she mentioned uh, vividly i recall that she said in 1933 fed you know uh, it went out of the market and it did not help the market by monetary policy in the same way i think uh, uh, right now what we are witnessing uh, fed is doing the same they are retreating from the market they are going into quantitative easy uh, uh, tightening quantitative tightening is not required the moment is going to hurt if you have seen the bond market which is a clear indicator that bond market is shaking from 0.55 right now the bond market is trading at 2.15 it clearly shows that bond market is nervous investors are nervous because they feel that deep recession is coming to the market it will stay longer uh, than 1933 and is going to hurt many investors consumers and economy at the macro level so i think history is repeating itself uh, after 89 years and there will be a lot of shenanigans in the market uh, shan uh, how how soon do you think that the us will start uh, its qe I think next year we expect QE to start once the discount rate is going to hit 2% fed is going to panic they will reverse course they will say the economy can't take the pressure of higher interest rates equity and bond markets will be shaking investors will be nervous and then they will have the same narrative that we have to start QE5 because the market needs a support by that time the markets have already you know 
have bazooka and bloodbath so it's not going to help for the next 2 to 3 years there will be a lot of panic in the market and global economy will only recover in 2025 all right shan thank you so much for joining us this morning the daily shan side ketua pakar ekonomi jui iqi membincangkan tentang bagaimana kitaran ganas ini kita melihat dalam ekonomi antara uh, stagflation kenaikan kadar faedah dan juga mengawal dasar monetari yang sukar pada ketika ini untuk mengimbangi antara kenaikan inflasi dan juga dasar monetari yang tepat untuk uh, mengatasi masalah pengangguran sebagai contoh kalau di Malaysia ini pengangguran kita adalah sekitar 4.2% dan ini menuntut uh, bagaimanakah dasar seterusnya akan uh, dilakukan uh, ekonomi sekarang ini masih dalam tempoh pemulihan jika kita lihat masih lagi ada sebelum uh, indikator daripada bank pusat untuk peningkatan kadar faedah seterusnya di sebalik peningkatan oleh the Fed dan juga dijangkakan uh, pada hujung tahun ini oleh penganalisis dan pemerhati pasaran kenaikan kadar faedah pertama oleh Malaysia akan dilaksanakan berbanding dengan pada kadar sedia ada 1.75%. Kita kembali lihat seketika, kita akan kembali selepas ini.